everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad book club. My name is Phoenix and once again I am joined with Gummy! <laughs> I am Gummy. My little gummy friend. I am the gummy friend. Now with Wait. real gummies. <laughs> uh oh, I wasn't told about this. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you're not ready to right, real gummies? <laughs> are on chapter two of... What's it called? Isolated. Isolated. <laughs> Uh, Sebastian fanfiction. Yeah, we got last to time more about this sad boy now. <laughs> absolutely. Last time we roamed Pelican Town and we got the lore of the game and uh, we kind of met everyone. Quite interesting, mm -hmm. to say the least. Yeah, and we got to meet Sebastian. He was all like emo and like very antisocial, and then we were like, "That's like my her. right there." <laughs> <laughs> it was just like the main character. They're yeah. gonna be perfect. Yeah, it's, it's love at first sight. <laughs> Absolutely. If they're gonna listen to My Chemical Romance together, it's gonna be perfect. Yeah, they're gonna ride his motorcycle into the distance. I loved that scene. <laughs> <laughs> it was cute. Right. Who would like to be you? Uh, what do I have to flip? Yeah, I was thinking about that. I have, like, a bunch of Pokemon corn Like, Yeah, I have Penny. Heads or tails? Uh, I'll do tails. <laughs> All right. That's you. All righty. I get to start this magical journey. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Chapter two. Why is there two hundred and sixty-nine comments on this chapter? <laughs> Let's do that for our little epilogue. Yeah. I I want to see if it was just like one paragraph or like one sentence that everyone just bombarded with comments. <laughs> For real. Chapter 2. The smell of pine trees and berries was what awoke me first. It lunged me out of the strange dream, once I, one I could not explain. They were in broken fragments, remnants of memories here and there, faces of people I couldn't remember, and things I can't name. I couldn't see myself, only the surroundings that constantly shifted from the thick forest thick forest oak trees, to the blinding lights of the city, to the magical place of Stardew Valley. Oh shit, that's the name of the game! <laughs> the, the body was I was in was mine, but I couldn't move it, couldn't feel the limbs I owned. There were flashbacks, ones that I didn't want to recall. There was Grandpa, stroking my hair as a young girl as I drifted asleep in his arms. There was Grandpa, seemingly so amazingly back then, a role model I leaned on. Then, there was Grandpa, on his deathbed, a pale, uh, slickly pale and dying. Oh my god, this is so sad. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> then, oh. then there were my parents. Not my adopted parents back in the city, but my real parents. We were adopted? When was this established? <laughs> oh, oh, I guess we're adopted. Yep, adopted. <laughs> Alright. They stood side by side, two different people, but alike in the sense of their greed. Their faces were blurred, and I knew their features would look similar to mine. Their figures dissolved with nothing but pure ash. There was something growing I could feel it, but I didn't know what it meant. I wanted to get out. I had to get out, but I couldn't. I was as if I was chained to this dream world, invisible bonds keeping me tied to this place. There was a voice at a distance. I couldn't hear it. No, it wasn't a voice. It didn't sound human. It was more beautiful about it, but something deadly. It was like a song, but it wasn't. It was like a call, but also a warning. Light flashed through my vision, and natural, and nature-like scent filled me once again, bringing me back to the real world. That's a fucking trippy-ass dream, girl. What the fuck? That was like a PTSD dream. We're back. Yeah, yeah. Boom. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I woke up from my bed with a jolt. Sweat clung to my forehead and my heart seemed to thud rapidly in a quiet place. Only that, it wasn't a familiar place. Not my room. Not the ranch that I had deemed my home. Though it certainly didn't feel like it yet. The bed I laid on top of was not my own. It was bigger and had dark sheets compared to the white and silky ones. I, had slept, I slept in the night before. The trace of pine and berries lingered here. A, a soothing scent that calmed me. Uh, do we do we fall asleep in someone else's house? 
Uh, yeah, what the hell's going on? Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> this shit. <laughs> and then I wake up with Sebastian nude next to <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not yet. Oh, that would be really funny if it was. <laughs> I cranked my head slightly, saw that posters of video games and fictional characters adore the dark walls. Made of- uh, Oh my god, it is! <laughs> please, no way. Please don't be new. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. But I don't remember- Did we meet him in the last one? And then Sam was like, oh, he, he gets to know you better. Yeah. Him. Why are we- I guess we'll find out. Why are we in his bed? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> uh, made out of gray brick that almost reminded me of a dungeon. There were no windows, no light trailed from the outside, no indication what time of day it was. I was in a room, clearly, but whose? I racked through my brain to recall what happened, but all I could think about was this scattered dream. I didn't want to think about it, tried to toss it towards the back of my mind, but it still lingered, like a creature wanting to pounce. This time, I turned to look behind me and let a startling gasp of what I saw, or should I say who was sitting there. So I saw who was sitting there? I saw who was sitting there. Yeah. Tucked into the corner of the medium-sized room was a computer desk in, the, in a chair. More posters filled the wall. And sitting there was a boy I had seen earlier. Sebastian. <laughs> he sat on the red stool in front of the computer and stared back as he looked up from his comic he was reading. His dark eyes had no emotion as they trailed from his bed to me. <laughs> if anything, he probably seemed annoyed that a complete stranger had slept in his bed. He just watched me. Those eyes were clearly used for analyzing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Instinctively, I, I checked to see if I had my clothes on. <laughs> Thank God we still have uh, them on. We have clothes on! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Seeing I was still wore my now dirt covered overalls. I felt normal, fine. No one had touched me. Thank fuck dude. I don't know if I could have kept reading this. Yeah, that would have been weird. Yeah, would you would just see me close the tab and going like, well, that was a great episode. Thanks for watching. Yeah, well, sorry to cut it short, guys, but uh, I think I'm gonna go yeah. take a shower. <laughs> We're good. We're good. I got up from the bed, feeling the pain in my legs and arms as I stood in a massive headache that was starting to form. I, I bit back a groan. Instead, I faced Sebastian, who stood up straighter with the same neutrality. What is it? My voice came out harsher than it- Oh shit, sorry. <laughs> what is it? My voice came out a little harsher than I should have, and I saw Sebastian flinch, but he schooled his features back to, to boredom. It seemed as if he was debating oh, what to yeah. say. Did we get drunk? <laughs> I now I kind of remember. I think at the end of the last chapter, we passed out in the mines. Oh, I don't totally yeah. remember going in the mines. Yep. Oh, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were. I literally just remember us meeting Sebastian, and that was it. Last chapter. Yeah. So I thought we were just like saw him and then boom, literally. <laughs> yep. Uh, let's see. Where the fuck was it? There it is. There it is. He debated what to say as he opened his mouth to speak, but nothing came out. He saw my impatient look of annoyance. Finally, he said, "You passed out in the mines last night. Abigail found you and brought you here." Right, I'm gonna him okay. popcorn over to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so I just brought you to this random boy's house. Yeah. So. <laughs> I recalled the house that I passed by near the mountains. It was a big brick house built from the side of a hill. And I had no doubt Robin started it from scratch. Uh, okay. It was in complete isolation from the other houses, looking over the rest of the town from its high position. I realized then that it was the closest place she could bring me to. And so, I've been knocked out since? I asked in disbelief, not knowing what to say. She could have brought me home! At, in the end, it had been my fault. I'd gone past the boundaries of what I can do, replenishing my energy until I couldn't take it any longer, I felt that. I nearly shuddered, thinking what would happen if I hadn't be found. Uh, oh yeah, you're hip. Believe me, I'm not too enthusiastic about it either. He replied, he replied bitterly. bitterly. 
setting his comic down. My mom insisted that you stay here for tonight. Robin. He was talking about Robin, I thought. I wondered where she was, and secretly hoped she would walk through the door at any moment and save me from this encounter. As if reading my thoughts, the dark-haired boy said, She's in town now, for yoga or something. <laughs> I nearly scoffed at this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that bitch's doing. <laughs> I nearly scoffed at this. Of course, she would do yoga. It wasn't such a typical thing Robin would do. I guess there weren't many things to keep you entertained here at the Valley. What I didn't fucking vendetta does she have against Robin? Did we ever establish that? Oh, yoga! Oh, God, typical Robin. What does that mean? <laughs> typical ginger. Like, like <laughs> yoga. <laughs> Ugh. I didn't reply after that, only shifting my narrowed eyes to study the person across from me. Sebastian was still sitting, but I could clearly look him this time. Not with a pestering Sam at our side, constantly forcing him to step outside his social boundaries. This person, he was different. I didn't know how to explain it. Most men at the city wanted one thing from women, like me, a non-platonic relationship, or anything that would give them an advantage to satisfy their demanding needs. Okay? I had gotten so used to their personalities and ignored them full out. I guess that's why I was drawn to Sam so easily. He wasn't like them. He was genuinely a nice guy. You didn't take advantage of me, I said flatly, almost as accusing him why he didn't do it. Why? The last part has seemed more like a demand rather than a question, but I didn't particular particular care at that point. <coughs> Sebastian didn't react at first, something finally simmering in those dark eyes. Then he, his face twisted to something of disgust, like he was appalled for someone accusing him of such thing. I... <laughs> he started to speak, but got cut off. I feel like that'd be a little awkward. Mm -hmm. Why did you take advantage of my body? And he's like, uh... Yeah. <laughs> he immediately stood. The door to his room flew, flew upon and strolled in Abigail, bouncing lightly on her feet while Sam trailed behind her. Despite Abigail being a foot smaller than her friend, Sam seemed to follow her like a lost puppy. She was definitely the ringleader of whatever group they had. Forb girl! Sam said in greeting with his fresh smile. Uh, who is Abigail? I don't remember. I'll be Abigail one then. And she's awake! <laughs> Abigail practically purred, coming in front of me with those big blue eyes. Okay. How lucky of you that I- was shit. How lucky of you that I was casually taking a walk into the mines and found you. I'd say you owe me one. <laughs> that tone. That playfulness. I didn't like it at all. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Such a hater. I didn't like it at all and narrowed my eyes at her. Last time I checked, I didn't own you, owe you anything. I could have taken care of myself. Cheats and fetched something out of her pocket, a shining mi mineral that radiated so brightly in her hand. The amethyst! My eyes darted to my pack on the floor and indeed had been raided. Abigail tossed at the gem in her hand so flawlessly and smooth, I would have admired her for it. I took this as a token of gratitude, if you didn't mind. <laughs> oh, I did mind, very much. But I kept my cool and smothered my face back to calmness. Whatever, I muttered. Gratefully, Sam noticed the tension stirring and cut in between, pushing Abigail to the side with a strong body. Interesting. <sighs> How are you feeling, farm girl? Looks like you overworked yourself. He tried to sound funny, but there was concern laced in his words. I'm fine, I said, though I wasn't particularly honest. The two of them, Sebastian wasn't really paying attention and drifted back to his comic. Stared at me expectantly, but I didn't continue. I barely knew these people and did not want to confide in my weird dreams. Huh? Yeah, they didn't ask about your weird dream, girl. They wanted to know if you were okay in the mines. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Abigail declared, stepping over towards where Sebastian sat. He looked up. Sebby, do you mind taking a walk with me? I gotta ask you something. Sebby. It was another nickname I doubt he enjoyed, but somehow, Abigail was an exception. He didn't mind the name that rolled off her tongue so smoothly. There was a past look between them, one that neither Sam and I could understand. Suddenly, 
it occurred to me that this was why Sebastian didn't do anything to me while he was passed out. Uh, this God, she's so accusatory, so petty, so jealous, yeah. <laughs> so mean. Damn, MC. Uh, I mean, okay. He would do anything while he was with Abigail. Sure. Oh, wait. Sure. I gotta go take a smoke anyway. Or I assume they were together. Abigail merely linked her arm with his and led them out. Sebastian pulled out a pack of cigarettes and began taking one out. I didn't bother to hide my disgust as we began packing their things. Smoking was bad. Incredibly <laughs> bad. And I shudder to think of the damage it could do- Wow! So, not only is she like a hater, she like, DRUGS ARE BAD, OKAY? Oh my- Yeah, girl, pick a side. <laughs> <laughs> I shuddered to think of the damage it could do to your lungs. Believe me, I knew. For it to become a habit of mine during my rebellious years when it, while in foster care, I dropped it immediately after that. Well, lucky you. And for someone so long like Sebastian to smoke on what appeared to be a regular basis, that was not good. Wow, okay. So fucking judgmental, my guy. Goddamn. <laughs> Abigail and Sebastian then left, giving Sam a look that I couldn't understand. Abigail simply gave me a smirk that I wanted to wipe off her face. Once they left, I immediately turned to Sam. That woman is incredibly controlling, I see, pointing out the door. Why do you put up with her? What the fuck did she do? <laughs> okay. It's you. Oh god, where, fuck, where is it? <laughs> Uh, it's the one after the 15 comment section. Oh, gotcha, okay. Once they left, I immediately turned to Sam. That woman is incredibly controlling, I see, it's pointing at the door. Why do you put up with her? Uh, well, yeah, uh, this is Sebastian. Oh, wait, that is? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought that was Sam, sorry. It's okay. We don't. She puts up with us, he joked. Eyes glittening. He's he seen my irritated glare and added, That's the way Abby is. We can't control her. I was about, I was to, about to Sorry. You go ahead. I was about to argue more about what we could do until Sam grabbed my arm and led me out the door. Sorry, let me out the room. He claimed Sebastian wouldn't like others to, to see his private belongings. <laughs> <laughs> There should have been a snarky reply to that, if not for the pain that, that ached in my head and my whole body. I clearly had exhausted myself. Sam sensed this and used his hands to steady myself as we left. We passed by a much younger woman on the way out. She was working on a blueprint outside. Her dark caramel skin seemed to glow as she worked and her chocolate eyes trailed past us. I have been content to walk past and head straight to my farm, but Sam wanted us to introduce. I was in the agony pain and wanted to rest, so the look on my face was well displeased. Uh, June? Maro. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> it's alright. June Maru. Maru June, he said, pointing at each of us. Sebastian's little sister. Oh, I thought that was sucky, okay. Alright, Sam's here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> My eyes perked at this, and now I took took in to analyze Maru more. There was a different aura about her, one that I liked. Oh, finally! She likes someone! <laughs> <laughs> she was shy and quiet, but not hesitant to do whatever she needed. There was a smile on her face as Sam asked what she was doing, and continued as she explained. She clearly loved her work. And she's related to that Brody boy? <laughs> <laughs> From a distance, you never guess that they were siblings, but up close you could see tiny features that they both shared, and tiny differences meddled between them. They're probably half-siblings, I thought to myself. That's the only way. If, As if in, in answer, a dark-skinned man entered the back door where Mari was working. He was her was her older male counterpart, noted by the apparent similarities between them. Their nose, the way their smile curved, in the same way. Once again, I was introduced to Sam. Demirius, husband of Robin. Definitely not Sebastian's father. <laughs> Gee, how can you okay, tell? I get, I get it. <laughs> 
these formalities started to bore me, and honestly, I had enough of talking to people. I not so d discreetly nudged Sam once Mario and her father started going into science. He got the message and let us out. We walked in silence set the trek back to the farm. I kept myself in, in my thoughts, thinking about previous events. Sam hummed an unfamiliar tune, and never in my life had I wanted to <laughs> knock someone out so badly. God damn. I only- Okay. Damn. Girl, you need to pick a struggle. You have too much shit <laughs> going on right now. <laughs> she don't need a farm, she need therapy. We said yeah. that last time. Yeah. Oh my gosh, shit, you know what I got an ad for on Instagram? What? Me with a the therapist while playing Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Stardew Valley, uh, wait, no, therapists when they get a Stardew Valley fan as their client, and yeah. it's just raining in money. <laughs> yeah. I only kept him for company, seeing that I didn't want to pass out from strain. I thought she liked him anyways. You have that look, farm girl. It's freaky. Oh shit, where was that? <laughs> it was right after what you just read. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah, that looks... now. Sorry. It's all good. I don't know why. I'm... I just didn't even see that. It's all good. I gave him a different look, one that not so thoughtful, but more threatening, urging him to continue. <laughs> it's like you just uncovered an earth-shattering revolution. <laughs> That's stupid. Stupid, but true. Stupid. Okay. <laughs> I sighed in relief at the back of the ranch to look closer. Suddenly, the the ramshack of the site didn't look so bad at all. Legs in pain, I marched up the steps and unlocked the door. Sam turned turned up behind me, watching as I was about to slam the door in his face. No, no hug of appreciation. No praise for my strong self for walking you back safely. <laughs> he patted in a mock sadness. I doubted he really cared if I left him alone. No. But, I just- I thought as I bit my lip, he did help me tremendously so far, and I- I'd have to consider him my only friend in town so far, though I never admitted oh. to him at all. <laughs> but this is about Sebastian. Alright. Yeah, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> this fucking- watch like this author, like, they were writing about Sebastian, and then halfway through they're like, no. <laughs> this switch I feel Sam. like Sam. <laughs> Hey, why not That's both? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at Sam's piercing blue eyes and saw that there was genuine goodness in them. Sure, he made crappy jokes and annoyed everyone until their wits end. Apparently everyone does. Yeah, but it was nice. <laughs> Sighing once again, knowing it was, I'd probably regret this, I stepped forward and patted Sam on the head. Once, twice. Thank you, I grinned out, the words so hard on my lips. He seemed shocked at first, but patted my head and, and booped my nose. At your service, farm girl. Third day, third day in town, and you're already making progress. And with a bow, he left. Third day in town. In three days, I met some people. Robin, whose rambles wanted me to scream. I don't know why these people hate Robin. All right. <laughs> uh, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Lewis, who was old and tried to make jokes to appear young. Sam, who couldn't seem to stay still. Abigail, who thought I was a mere game to her. What? I, yeah, I don't get it either. <laughs> Mara and her father, who believed everyone knew about uh, keen, keen mathematics. And Sebastian, the emo-like boy who kept himself. But that was only half of the people. I let out a frustrated streak and slid on the floor. Stardew Valley was a lot more complicated than I expected. Oh, when you assume shit about people, yeah. Oh, the stupid old nice man. Uh, he's so annoying. Oh, and that stupid carpenter that does yoga and shit. <laughs> oh, science. Oh, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, chapter three. Chapter three. Yep. Uh, what Would would you like to begin? Yeah, I can- I can do that. I'll make the sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we don't get so- like, like, the last chapter it opened up with us having, like, a lucid nightmare dream, so... Hopefully nothing crazy happens this time. 
I hope it's more about Sebastian. Yeah. Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It still doesn't occur to me just how beautiful Pelican Town was until I was once again roaming through its steps once one day. Birds of all colors flew freely in the sky, chirping their melodic tunes and their beautiful harmony. They soared and soared across the mountains, trees, and buildings. Their wings glistened under the sun's watch as they glided along the wind that carried them. They were so free, so careless, and I couldn't help but rest my gaze on them for a minute longer. Flowers of all sorts sprung out from the ground or were tended to in the pots and gardens. They bloomed so radiantly and popped out of the, the showcase its magnificence. Evelyn, the elder lady who probably took care of these plants, beamed at me. My senses took me to smile back, to give the appropriate answer, but I always kept that neutral face. She didn't seem to notice and kept that smile. How can you be mean to Evelyn? She's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I hope we don't like, like, God, that elderly bitch. <laughs> oh, I hate everyone. Yeah. And the people, the townsfolks, they were beautiful too. Not so much in an outward appearance sense, but in on a more spiritual scale. Yes, many of them had a glowing skin, so tanned from sun rays glistening on them every day. It was beautiful enough as it is, for I knew many back in the city who lacked the comparison in their pale, ghost-like skin. A tan complexion is what they have been beckoned, have been begging for, and here, it was natural. Beautiful. Meanwhile, Sebastian has like the pasty as white skin from, <laughs> from the base of the <laughs> Doom scrolling Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he does! <laughs> Uh, and then he has to wait for his D and D sessions like four days later. Yeah. So he just has to fill his time by scrolling social media. Yeah. Vibe. But there was an internal beauty in them, one that I have never seen before back in the city. From the first day, I was welcomed and loved, and immediately treated as her own, save for a few occurrences. There was no greed or selfishness or any vices to overcome it. There was a sort of beauty that could never, that could be faded away easily by darkness or evil, the one that people cherished. I realized that I liked this sort of be beauty and I didn't want anything to come in the way of it. I had been so preoccupied by set with settling into that, I forgot about the awe of the town. By that, I mean, by that, I meant by getting overly frustrated over the most simplest of things, working tools and how to utilize them. For a city girl like me, I use I'm used to modern technology and media. I grew fuck reliant. <laughs> reliant on these devices. I slacked on physical strength so much that I could barely use a pickaxe. No wonder why we passed out so fast in the fucking mines. We swung that thing once and then we're like, whoa, I'm exhausted. I'm just, well, I'm just used to scrolling up my phone. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> The frustration was swept away and replaced with a nauseous feeling as I, pa as I passed on a bench covered in shrubs and flowers. Two familiar figures sat side by side and stared at the dis distant ocean ahead, Penny and Mario. A bright light laugh came from Penny, her cheeks rosy from the sun. Mario soon followed as they relaxed, falling deep back into their oh, discussion. I never had friends back in the city. I was It was all about me and no one else. Really? Holy shit, I would have never guessed that. <laughs> Narcissist. <laughs> they were co-workers that I had tried to deem friends, but it was nothing more than people- That was people. too much of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she was. <laughs> True. But it was nothing more than people taking joy in schemes and business. No one understood me and never tried to. So I didn't bother making friendships. It was all about alliances. Who to stick with in order to stay with your heredity. Hierarchy. Hierarchy, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Minus a point <laughs> for me. All good. And to see such an innocent friendship. I don't know how to feel. Hatred? Joy? No. It's more like a desire. A need. Longing. I found myself taking a step closer feet paddling on the concrete. It was as if I was grabbing Tane toward them, lowered in by their chatter. 
Penny's blue eyes looked up as she gasped. June! I, I cringed inward at the mistake, not realizing that I made my presence known. I, I had been content to watch from a distance, not to join the conversation. Hello, I let out quietly. Maru gave me a bright smile, her features lightening up. Who the fuck was Maru again? Is that me? <laughs> uh, it's, um, Sebastian's, uh, stepsister. Yeah, yeah. Uh, science. Did I voice her? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, sh she just spoke, so I can voice her. Okay. You should join us! Penny and I like to catch up on everything in our lives. I nearly scoffed at this. What was there to do in this town? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing Ooh. much, I suppose. But judging by their cherry discussion, they found a lot of things interesting. My mouth opened up to immediately decline the offer and walk away. Wow. That's so fucking- did... Man, Terrible. I would love to have- I wonder have... why you don't have friends. Yeah, I was about to say, like, didn't you just say you had a longing to get friends, and then you immediately were like, No, I, I can't no. do this. <laughs> this is too much. Dude, I wish. I wish so many people would ask. Damn. <laughs> It was what I have done. It's what I always do. But I looked at the two faces peering at me. Anticipation and friendliness uh, each on their faces. Mara was always kind, even if I wasn't the most ple pleasant to her. A small part of me was still curious about her family dyna dynamic, but I shrugged it off. And Penny, I recalled our first encounter a few days prior and how she seemed intimidated. I didn't blame her. But after a while, she seemed to warm up to me and saw how I maybe wasn't that cruel, heartless woman from the city. And even so, I surprised myself when I said, Sure! I sat beside Penny and joined the conversation. The two s seemed joyous over this, and I never, ex and never expected me to actually agree. We talked, or they talked, really. I merely observed the way their eyes would, would hold that glow within them, or the way they tried to include me in their conversation. I only smiled and shook my head, or nodded along with whatever they said. God, this- this is me. <laughs> this is me trying to, like, have a conversation with, like, a group of people. <laughs> Especially if I never met them, holy sh- holy cow. God, it's, it's, like, awkward when, like, you know only one person in that group and you get introduced yeah. to all these new people, and then you just gotta just like, try your best. <laughs> yep, it's all you can do. Although I didn't talk much, I enjoyed their presence. They radiated happiness, and it was clear that they were such good people. The way they talked, the way they acted, it was too pure. They exemplified that beauty of, of the town. And here I was, creating a bleak of darkness that pit inside Emo. me. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go home and last, like, that one song is like, Cause tonight will be the night. And <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna be, like, in the rain with her hoodie on, listening to it on her headphones. Yeah, one eye covered with hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that pit inside me loathed that I could never be like them. Suddenly, another figure approached us, standing tall and smug as he loomed over the bench. He held a grime ball in one hand, and the other a racket through the, through his chestnut hair. He flashed a pearly smile as he would have... Wait, <laughs> he's flashed a pearly smile that would have made many swoon to their knees, but not this group. Uh, uh. Oh, oh, Yoba, what are you doing here, Alex? Oh, because Yoba is like kind of the god. That's yeah. awesome. Mario glared. Mario, sorry, it's all right. Mario glared behind her glasses as she crossed her arms over her chest. His eyes landed on me, and he gave us a, a sight wave. Just saying hi to the new farmer. Remember me, Alex? <laughs> like we already <laughs> hate him. <laughs> We're like, ah, oh, this Good fucking word. yeah. <laughs> I remembered him as a consult. Cons what the fuck does that say? Conceited? Conceited. Yeah, conceited jock who had nothing better to do than carry around a ball the whole day. I had talked to him briefly, deciding if he was worth the effort, and soon left. He reminded me too much of those stereotypical athletes in school. Oh, okay. Athletes! <laughs> How dare you! It's everyone. <laughs> yeah. Who, who knew they'd end up in Stardew Valley, too? He wore his usual green jacket, his side, its size and 
embroidered with yellow in <laughs> with yellow to form a big S. A dark blue s shirt was tucked underneath it, and I could tell right away that how much muscle he kept underneath. Bro, you you staring? <laughs> he's just like eyeing him down. No wonder why he's creeped out. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely worked out, and why he didn't probably show off his figure, I don't know. Maybe he likes to keep modest. It's like, look at my fat muscles. <laughs> God. <laughs> I realized he was practically the male counterpart of me. Otherwise, appearance-wise, personality traits, not so much. I like- I have liked him if he were less annoying and self idolized did you just meet him? Yeah, I don't, this is the first time we met Alex, right? All oh, these people are so self-centered. Um, oh, I'm gonna go by myself yeah. and ignore everyone. I'm gonna play My Chemical Romance. <laughs> <laughs> yep. As much as it pains me to do this, I, I do. I reply bleakly. But this made him his grin turn even wider. What do you want? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh god intimidating these poor men yeah <laughs> no men's ever gonna come up to June and like ask her out or do like anything she's gonna kiss <laughs> yeah. hey hey June <laughs> <laughs> oh my god just give me a look on those fucking creepy cat girls <laughs> yeah <laughs> wolf girls yeah yeah <laughs> Alex put up a look of sadness and shook his f <laughs> in shock on his face clearly offended by my question what can't I not go up to lovely ladies and ask how their days are? I'm not going to ask if you were heading to the saloon later on tonight. Everyone hangs out on Fridays. I glanced up at Penny and Maru, se seeming to sense that they were clearly annoyed by his presence. Are you? Do you? <laughs> are you sure about that? Yeah, I, I think you're gaslighting. These people are just, like, putting your impressions on them, my guy. You guys look uncomfortable. Are you uncomfortable? And they're like, um, no, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that this was something that often happened. The former look- the, Okay. The former look uncomfortable and squirmed under Alex's gaze. The other seemed more- Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Defiant and ready to strike if necessary. I don't- I, dial, I doubt this is a real thing. <laughs> Oh my god. I don't see how any of this is your business, I pointed out. i never been to the saloon yet, and wonder if what really would go down on a Friday night. Alex shrugged and tossed the grind ball between his his hands. I couldn't help but be curious, can't I? I never go there anyways. Too many old people in one room. He looked at me <laughs> and winked. I'd make an exception for you, June. <laughs> Disgust coiled with within me, and it could clear. Yeah, it wrapped around like a snake, <laughs> and it was clear both Maru and Penny were extremely uncomfortable. I knew I had to do something. Acting hes hesitantly, I got up and peered up at Alex's form. He was much taller, but it didn't matter. Look, we don't want you here, all right? I took a step forward and. Situated myself much closer than expected so that our noses were nearly touching. My voice was full of warning and disgust. Alex didn't back away, deeming I wasn't much of a threat to him. He only looked amused. Oh, how wrong he was. <laughs> Do whatever you want, but don't bother us. So you can go back to whatever you came from before I do something really bad to her. That pretty face of yours. Damn. <laughs> Threatening. <laughs> I sneered up at him, putting whatever anger I had built up in me towards him. Alright, I'll go ahead and popcorn to you. <laughs> it wasn't hard not to. I had been bottling up a lot of- is that right? Yeah. I had been bottling up a lot of feelings and kept them to myself. Slowly and slowly, it was eating me alive and I had to do something about it. Poor Alex was the victim. <laughs> So edgy. This time, Alex did back away and put his hands up, dropping the grid ball on the floor. Judging by the fire in my eyes and the way I glared at him, he truly did see terrified. But it was quickly replaced with a similar glare. 
Gee, okay, I came in for kindness. I didn't expect to be treated like shit from a brat. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly flinched at the last word, but held my gaze. He started to turn and walk away before saying, You really aren't the person everyone thought you'd be. I was going to say something more harsh and cruel, but his words made me stop. You really aren't the person everyone thought you'd be. What did he mean by that? Could it be the fact that I'm a huge bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe! <laughs> I knew that people expected me, that my arrival was well known. Did they really expect me to be like Grandpa? What? That I'd be the charming, young female version of him? They were certainly wrong. If they expected dazzling smiles and preppy conversations, then I wasn't who they thought I would be. They didn't understand the hardships of the city and what they can do to a person. Alex seemed to notice the look on my face and shook his head, and then he was gone. Okay. Nobody understands me! <laughs> I turned back to Penny and Maru to see them impressed, yet also equally terrified at what just occurred. Maru opened her mouth to say something, but nothing came out. Penny just stared. Whatever sort of friendship I mustered between them was either well-raised or tarnished over what I'd done. All I knew n now was that I didn't want to see its outcome. I sighed and merely said, You're welcome, before stalking <laughs> off, not giving an ounce of care for whatever I, wherever I wound up. Oh my god. Bro. Massive this, bitch right here. This bitch needs to calm down. <laughs> needs to calm She's down. She's doing too much. <laughs> Doing too much. That place ended up being the saloon, considering it was not far off from where I was. It was a relatively older building, indicated by the worn down roof and structure. Leaves and branches trailed down its side, grown from the roots. It was the late afternoon, so the warm gaze of the sun was replaced by a cold chill. I didn't care about any of that. I stormed in angrily and shut the door with a bang. The loud noise so erupted that the ground seemed to shake. It was a wonder nothing collapsed. Oh my gosh, anger issues. My eyes darted around the room and the red anger soon, soon turned to utter awareness as I saw all the heads that peered curiously at me. Oh, they're in public? Yep. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I thought she just like went home to cry and listen to my chem. Alex was right. It was mostly for older people who came in for a drink as I spotted a few fim similar faces. Robin, Mr. Lewis, Demetrius, the others I knew, but I couldn't recall their names. Some danced to the jazz music fitting from the jukebox. Others drank and laughed at corny jokes. Once I came, it all stopped. The chatter of voices, the shuffling of bodies. It was as if time had been put on pause and everything was being relayed in slow motion. June? I realized then that I had been standing by the door in shock, my feet planted to the floor as I stared at everything, yet stared at nothing. It was only till Mr. Lewis stood in front of me that I was back in reality. Concern, concern flashed in his old eyes. Everyone else completely stopped to what they were doing, craning their heads in a way to subtly see what was going on. I wasn't a fool to know that they weren't watching. Well, yeah, you just slammed everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> My face still red from the anger, but I tried to cool it down. It was incredibly hard when almost half of our town was watching me like hawks about to devour their only source of food. You could be it, Mr. Lewis. Alrighty. Are you sure? Mr. Lewis asked, complete, clearly skeptical with my response. I shook my head. I'm fine. I just need a drink. <laughs> the old man stepped aside as I brushed past and took a right walking wherever my feet took me. I knew very well that the bar was not on this side, but I just needed to get away from pressuring eyes. I walked farther away from the music and chatter in much more quiet space. I heaved a sigh in relief, but stopped short in my tracks when I saw that the room was also occupied. Uh, people at, at a bar? Yeah, what the pe heck? People in a public space? How dare they No! <laughs> God, get away from me! You have the audacity? <laughs> <laughs> this side of the saloon had a pool table at its center, chairs and lounges tucked in the corner. Various arcade and vending machines lined up along its walls, blinking with bright lights to alert its guests. The bar and main floor may be out for the older townsfolk, but this is where younger citizens hung out. So it should have been such a shock for me to see the usual trio there. Still, my mouth hung open and made me forget a bit about the earlier encounter. 
Abigail and her mask of purple hair was sprawled on the couch as she watched Sam and Sebastian go out in a game of pool. Sam looked frustrated as he played, while Sebastian seemed completely fine and partially smug at his skills. It was Sebastian who noticed me first, turning his attention away from the game to look at me. He also seemed shocked, but didn't say anything. Of course, he was always the observant one, choosing to remain silent and watch from the sidelines. Just like me, for real. He's just like me, guys. <laughs> We're soulmates. Oh my god. <laughs> my god. For a moment, his gaze rested on mine as he was taking me in for the first time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we, sir, this is a bar? <laughs> <laughs> sir, this is a public area? <laughs> sir, this is a Wendy's, no! <laughs> uh, this is a game of pool. <laughs> Get away from me. I noticed the way his eyes trailed from mine to the rest of me, analyzing the way I stood and held myself carefully. An interesting way to word this. Yes. Then he took in my flushed appearance and the beat face that grew even more hotter by his stare. I suddenly recalled the days prior, where I had gone mining and passed out from exhaustion. Abigail found me and brought me to Sebastian's house, where I remained passed out in his bed. <clears throat> I shuddered, thinking about the dark room and how he probably watched as I slept. How vulnerable I was and so ex- Bro, don't think of it like that. Oh my god. Yeah. I wondered what he thought about all this. Me coming to town. He didn't particularly seem to care, but a nagging part of me wanted to know. Sebastian was about to open his mouth to say something, but then- Farm girl! Before I knew it, Sam had dropped his cue stick and approached me. Much to my dismay, he ruffled my hair. But I didn't stop him. I was going to invite you to hang out with us, but but I wasn't sure if you'd be interested, he explained. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but at least you're here now, so that's good. We started a game of pool and I gotta admit, I'm not doing so well. Hey, uh, why do you look so flustered? <laughs> Sam continued to ramble on about Yoba knows what. So I merely shrugged and sat down on the couch near Abigail who I noticed was watching my every move. Sam continued with his game with Sebastian while also absentmindedly talking. I didn't ignore her, but I didn't talk to her either. After previous events, I didn't know how to feel about her. She was always so full of herself and seemed inclined to show just how good she was. Oh my god. As much as I hated to admit it, I was intimidated by this woman. <laughs> of course I wouldn't let my true feelings show. I think you were Abigail. Yeah. Hey! I felt the couch shift and soon Abigail was herself was next to me. Blue eyes piercing into mine. She was so close that I could smell the sweet scent of lavender on her. Something I never noticed before. I had always associated harsh scents with her, so smelling something so pure seemed off. I turned my head to her and was about to open my mouth to speak, but she interrupted me. Look, I know we prob you probably hate me by now, but clearly, I haven't made the, the best first impression, so I just want to see how well you do. <laughs> A moment of silence as I processed her words. What? <laughs> I finally asked in disbelief, not understanding what she was talking about. She shrugged as she watched the boys play, Sam distantly complaining in the background. It's been a while since we had someone new in our town, and I wanted to see what type of person you were. If you'd fit well into our little group. Uh, wait. Oh, I guess this is me. So what? This was all part of your plan to see if I'd fall prey to your stupid games? <laughs> and Abigail nodded. Did she say this? I, th I think this is Abigail. I guess we'll assume. And you're not a bitchy person like I thought you were. <laughs> this time, Abigail laughed and this dissolved whatever tension had been in the room. Oh. I'm not. <laughs> oh. Oh, you, you I, think, I think that I think the line I read was supposed to still be you. Oopsies. <laughs> I, I can't tell. It's okay. It was worded yeah. weird. I'm not. Well... I don't think so. It depends on the day. <laughs> there was that glint in her eyes. Not one of mysteriousness, but all-knowing. I think that's you. <laughs> and what's the verdict? You pass. You're a pretty headstrong person, did you know? 
You, I always wondered what you, it would be like to live in the city. <laughs> a dream-filled look crossed her eyes. I wanted to tell her it wasn't as glorious as it seemed, but decided I didn't want to ruin her Zuzu city dream. I guess she had drifted off into her own world, based off the day's look she had on her face. I shook my head in expiration, not believing that someone who seemed so cocky could also act like a freak. Weird. <laughs> Bro, barely anything's going on, damn. After a while of comfortable silence, Abigail took something out of her pocket and handed it to me. It was a shimmering purple. I recognized it immediately as the amethyst she had taken from me. This is yours. <laughs> She said. I took it in my hands, but didn't feel the same desire it f than I did previously. I felt proud and greedy and wanted more, but this time, I found it completely useless. I shook my head and gave it back to her. Keep it. I have no use for it anyways. And it was the truth. After the other day of passing out and suddenly waking up in a stranger's bed, I had decided not to go mining for a while. The purple-haired girl be beamed and pocketed once again. You know, June. Abigail started. Uh, oh, <laughs> flicking her gaze back to me with a grin. You're not as bad as you seem. You really aren't the person everyone thought you'd be. Alex's harsh words came back to me, tumbling all at once, and I fought hard to hide the flinch. So, who am I supposed to be exactly? I asked quietly to Abigail. She seemed surprised at my question, but I opened her mouth to speak. Sam's voice interrupted from where he stood. Is this what I think it means? His voice was etched with excitement. Abigail stood and so did I. Before I knew what was happening, the group was gathered around the pool table, the game no longer of interest. Popular pop music back in the city played through the loudspeakers of the room, echoing throughout. There was a tray of shots, uh, which I then realized was tequila. Someone must have brought it in at some point. Sam and Abigail were ecstatic, dancing and raising their arms to the flow of the music. They sang at the top of their lungs to whatever song they were singing to. But it wasn't emo, so I don't care. <coughs> I looked at Sebastian, who clearly was not participating. He leaned against a back wall near the table, arms crossed and unamused. He still wore the familiar black clothes and seemed content to blend into the shadows. Come on, Seb, you have to do this! said Sam, grabbing his arm and pulling him closer towards the shots. Sebastian didn't protest as his friend put a glass in his hand. A drink to Jude's arrival! Would you like to continue? Yeah, I, I can finish up this chapter. I looked down at the drink that was shoved in my own hand. It had been a while since I had alcohol, knowing the effects it had on me. I knew better than to drink back in the city, always having to stay sober, alert. I know that. <laughs> Detroit moment. Yeah. <laughs> as I glanced down and saw... As... Wait. But as I glanced around and saw the town I was in, the dancing of the crowd, the, the roar of laughter and conversation, I decided that I needed to get loose once in a while. Whatever comment Alex had said may have bugged me, but I wouldn't give him the satisfaction knowing it affected me. I decided to let it go, as I always did. Do you? Do you always- I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't think you let things go. No. <laughs> when I looked back up, I locked eyes with Sebastian. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, mama. The strands of black hair fell over his eyes and brushed them as he brushed them away. Although dark eyes stared into mine, I knew there was something within them. A light that was once there, shrouded by darkness. A nagging part of me, always curious once again, about who this man really was. Cheers, I whispered to no one, but I knew he heard it. I gulped down my drink- I knew he heard it. Yeah. It, it, all that's important is that Sebastian heard it. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I gulped down my drink and felt the strong liquor in my throat, but I didn't care. Sebastian followed suit. Sam and Abigail swarmed around me, cheering along with the music. Soon, more rounds of drinks followed and everything became a blur. Welcome to the Loner Group, Abigail said with a cheeky grin. The only group you find here in Sardew Valley. <laughs> and then it's the... yeah. Yep. Wow. Leave me alone! I, like, when she stormed into the bar, I didn't know she did. I thought she just went to her room and, like, <laughs> exhaled and, like, stomped in. But then everyone was staring at her goddamn edgy. 
Maybe she thought she was in like maybe it was like in her blind rage. Like she thought she went home. She slammed uh, the door and then she's like, wait a minute. <laughs> everyone, you know, puts down their drinks. God. Yeah. Record well, like the record scratch. <laughs> I think she'll be a fit for Sebastian, but she might need a little bit of therapy first. Oh, a little? That's kinda <laughs> generous. I would give her a lot of therapy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know if there's a therapist in Stardew. We'll see. I don't know if Maybe there does will Dr. Be. Harvey uh, count as a therapist? Uh, enough. <laughs> yeah, at least he's a doctor. <laughs> he's a doctor of some sort. Yeah. Don't All know right. what kind, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I guess if you guys would like to check out this book, I will have a link down in the description below. Also down there. Uh, you will see Gummy's little card. That way you can check out their portfolio of different art that they have done. And, uh, Thank you. And, dude, you make some fucking good ass art. I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> buy from you if it wasn't good, you know? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that's gonna do it. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, the comments like, Kiwi Ussy, brat my ass, fuck off with your athlete shit. <clears throat> This Damn. comment may be offensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is recent. Damn, like, dude. These these people. We also going off. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I, my oh, name oh. is Phoenix. <laughs> this is Gummy, and I guess we'll Gummy. see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>